when people, lay, lay people and patients and their families hear about, uh, do you want to take part in this clinical trial? I think for a lot of people, they start to get worried, you know, guinea pig pops up, they think of placebos, and I don't think they understand uh, the way that, um, you know, these clinical trials really work. And so I'd love for you to be able to, you know, take this time to let people know how, you know, how important they are and, and what they really, what really goes into these clinical trials. Oh, thank you. That was a great softball because I love to answer this, this question. So clinical trials often provide options that are not available in any other way. And at the minimum, they provide a very comprehensive approach for how we treat patients because, you know, patients have to be under such great scrutiny. And there's a whole team that supports uh, the conduct of a clinical trial that patients have and get more attention than they would ever get in any other way. Clinical trials test new drugs or new interventions um, that are uh, presumed to potentially be better than the standard of care. Now, the, the, the key word is presumed because we don't know whenever you're testing something new, you hope it works, you don't know if it will, and you don't know if it potentially could also be more toxic. Um, first, a couple, couple of things. I mean, the, there was some transgression in the past regarding clinical trials, but, but this is nowadays incredibly and highly regulated. No one will ever do research with you without you knowing and you consently, uh, you know, uh, consciously uh, consented to the, to the, you know, to the process of a clinical trial. So, and th there's a discussion and there's a signature of papers. So, you know, people don't do research just like in the background in your particular situation. Clinical trials are very explicit events where patients and families um, actively have to decide to participate. Uh, furthermore, there's a great level of safety and there's more scrutiny on, on clinical trials than there is in anything else in the, in the clinic. And, and you as a patient always have the option to say, I don't want to do it anymore for whatever reason or for no reason at all. You always have that lever. I have that lever if for whatever reason I think in a clinical trial that it is not in your best interest, um, then we're going to stop the trial. So it's really a confluence of the interest from the patient and the interest from the investigator, and of course, uh, the interest of the sponsors, which could be national sponsors, it could be pharmaceutical companies that support this, so that we conduct those clinical trials. And there's a high degree of rigor. We can't just go around and say, oh, no, I'm going to see you next week instead of this week. If the clinical trial says something, we try to adhere to that as much as possible so that we have the high quality and the consistency of the data. So you would know about it. So there's, there's no guinea peak testing or anything like that. Phase one, which is when you test uh, something new, sometimes the first time it's administered to humans uh, to make sure it's well tolerated and the toxicity is reasonable, that it's not something that is prohibitive. And oftentimes this has a phase where you escalate from low doses towards higher doses. Uh, now, there may be great laboratory exams that are, you know, like just work with animal models or something that you say this is a good approach, but it's not until you test it in humans that you know, and that's what's a phase one. Uh, and there's no placebo, no comparison. Phase two is when you give a drug that already has proven to be, a, you know, safe and try to determine how effective they are. So most of the time, what you measure there is just a response rate. Uh, and the better the drug, the higher the response rate. Now, phase three is when you compare something to the standard of care. And, and again, and this is where sometimes placebos come into play, but I need to explain how. You know, let's say you take drug A and uh, A is the standard of care, but we think adding drug B might be good. So if you do a phase three trial, you know, a frequent uh, way of doing it is that, okay, everyone's going to get drug A. That's the standard of care. That's what you would get back home. But then by a flip of a coin, we're going to have half of the patients take drug B and the other half don't take it. And patients know this. It has to be a very explicit discussion. Now, if, if we do it that way and doctors knew that you're getting the drug B and others are not, they may have preconceived ideas and they might care for you differently and they might use two different things or even gauge things differently on how you're doing. So that's why we sometimes have blinded studies where the, there's placebo pills that are identical to B, but only half of them are active. And neither doctors nor patients know which of those pills are. But as you can see, everyone's taking drug A. That's the standard. The question is whether adding drug B makes a difference. And again, you would know explicitly about it. And for those who participate in trials, thank you. It is only because of those trials that we're able to advance the science, which leads us to the progress that we have been talking about.